And what is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Designated Players, an MLS podcast. Today, we are back with another fun tier list. Today, we are going through every goal of the year winner from 1996 to present day 2023 and putting them in a tier list. For those of you who don't know how tier lists work, it's relatively simple. We have five categories. We are going to rank each one based on the five categories. And by the end of it, we will have a pretty well-distributed bell curve, as us engineers like, that describes, eh, it was all right, it was really, really good, or Atlanta United rigged the voting system. You know, just if if we're going through there. Speaking of Atlanta United and fans rigging the voting system, I'm with one of those Atlanta United fans. Connor, how you doing? Oh, I've absolutely contributed to that, 100%. I believe it. And I do not regret it in the slightest. <laughs> yeah, you just have absolutely cooked and ruined the the legitimacy of goal of the year. Oh, yeah, because goal of the year is such a big crown to win the legitimacy of it. Well, let's relax now. Oh, stop it. Well, there is a lot of goals to rank here. And really, I think the next one we should do after this is ranking our scarves. Tier list of scarves. You have too many. That's too long of an episode. There's never too much time to talk about scarves. There is. There isn't. So why don't we start with yours? Where Where is yours and where would you rank your scarf on an S to D tier? All right. So my scarf for today is an S tier scarf for a lot of S tier goals that are going to be in this list. And it's any goal that involves this team right here, Atlanta United. They have like three goals in here and i think only one of them is actually legitimate (laughs) well we'll see about that we'll see about that um i also have an s tier but it's because of the design and the design alone and it is my portland timber scarf beautiful mountain on the back see if i've got it the direction correct no i do not (laughs) nice one We've I'm got still tr- backwards. It's oh, yeah. He still oh. messed it up. There we go. Yeah. There you go. The tree that meets in the front. It's still messed up. Let's go. <laughs> You're fumbling the bag like Red Bull and <laughs> League's Cup. Tree, tree that meets in the front. An absolute S tier scarf. Um, that and my Nashville one are up there. And uh, Cincinnati Wiener Dogs, I think, are my three S tier scarves of the 70 that are sitting in my closet right now. You got to get the wall up and going. Yeah, I keep thinking about it. I keep thinking about it. We'll we'll move. We move. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. We do have, a, we have 28 goals to go through. Now, a lot of them should be relatively easy. I don't think we'll disagree on a ton of them. But here are the five categories that we have. So the usual S tier is going to be Puskas winner. The A tier, the one just below that, hanging in the Louvre. I think that's how you pronounce that. Is that right? The French Museum hanging in the Louvre? Yeah. What, are you uh, taking that straight from a Chris MD video? Yeah, relax. Okay? That's always on his tier list. It's an Ollie Dixon one. All right, relax. <laughs> Ollie Dixon. Um, the, the B tier, the one in the middle, uh, decent hit. Decent hit, that is. Uh, the C tier, average, you know, good, not good enough. And then the D tier or the bottom, Connor could score that. I think these are all very accurate and, and pretty well describing what the tiers are for these types of goals. Agreed? I would agree, yes. Yeah. Listen, if there's well, any goal I, that ends up in Connor could score that, you should be happy because, I mean, none of these goals you could score. <laughs> That's true. That is <laughs> absolutely true. Yeah. Uh, are we putting, like, are we just rating it based off the strike or is there, like, sentiment into it? Like, I want, oh, I want you to me. rate it however you want because similar to our last one, we have to agree. So we have to, we have to agree on this. We're only making one. Okay. So yeah, yeah. We have to find an agreement. So if you want to put forward a... Oh, this goal, you know, was a, you know, M qualified them for the league or won them MLS Cup or whatever, right? And you you want to say it has more sentimental value? Great. I will hear it and I will move for it. Um well I I have none of that data anyway, so that's good. (laughs) Well, I've got I've got a few of them that would fall into that category. So so we can we can chat about it. Sure. I think we go in we go in chronological order. We start with 1996 and move forward. Yeah, absolutely. We definitely I think that's order. a good call. I think that's a good call. So we will start in 1996 with one of the goals 
that we've actually already covered. I've got this video saved somewhere already, and it is Eric Winalda's first ever MLS goal in league history. San Jose against DC United. Back when they were the clash. Back when they were the clash. Coming in on the left-hand side, cutting it back across the face of goal, and putting it in the far corner. One that goes down, at, you know, as we were speaking of, with sentimental value and sentimental history. Where would you put this goal? I mean, this is this is why I asked the question, because of the sentimental value. Because let's be honest, for a goal of the year, it's a weak goal. It It is weak. But it's the first ever goal in history. So that's why I asked the question of like, if we're just going to rate it on how good the strike is, how good is the goal itself? Like there are just infinitely better goal of the years uh, on this list later down the line. So, I mean, I'm kind of jumping already to like, I mean, it, it like it's it like it's a D or an F, but it's just depending on if you want to put the sentimental value on it because it was the first goal in league history, but it's like for a goal of the year, it's weak. I couldn't agree more, but as I mentioned, I had a few with sentimental value, and this was one of them. I don't think you can put the first ever goal in history of the league in a goal that Connor could score. I don't think you handle the pressure. I think you crumble under that <laughs> sort of that sort of. I mean, well, we, nothing's going to be an F because I can't score any. Of we these. covered that <laughs> story. We covered that story, right? Like the monumental pressure going into the 80th plus minute goalless in front of a country that thought soccer was just a bunch of zero zero draws just for Eric Winalda to pop up and put it away. I think it has to go in average. I think it has to go in the fourth, you know, the fourth level of five. I don't think we could put it in, in the bottom bottom. I think there are a few that could be bottom bottom. Uh, and I, I think there a lot of the early ones kind of fall in that, in that category. But I think that for the sentimental value alone, we put it in average. So, so D tier. Sure. The, the you, said, you said one above the bottom. Yes. This is not average. This is below average. So then it's an F. So you want you want to put it in Connor could score that. Yeah. You want to put it all right. I don't know if I can agree with that because of the the monumental side of it. You th- it's just you're you're getting too attached. You're you're letting your feelings get in front of the facts. I want everybody in MLS history land to know that you are a full of slander and you don't appreciate the history of our great league. How about, how about this? We'll put it in C for now. If C gets overcrowded, we bump it down. Fine. We'll put it in average. And if it moves down, it moves down. Fine. I'm okay with that. All righty. Well then the next one, I gotta be honest with you. The next one feels very similar to what we just watched. Marco Echeverry picks a ball at the top of the box turns two or three different defenders dribbles through and kind of just passes it into the bottom corner. Listen, this is why I couldn't put the other one in, in Connor could score that. Cause I mean, this one was just, it's an F it's you an don't F. have to beat around the bush. Yeah, it's, this, it's an F <laughs> this one's Connor could score that. I mean, listen, not, I'm sure there weren't a ton of brilliant, wonderful goals scored in that year. But if this is the best of the best, that's a rough year. <laughs> yeah, that's not great. Not great at all. So moving swiftly on. I don't think there's anything more to, more to worry about that. Yeah. Now we've got some tough ones. 1998, it's Brian McBride for the Columbus crew. Off a free kick, sneaks into the back post, has overrun the ball, puts his leg up in the air, and hits a flying scissor kick into the goal. Uh, oh, oh, this is going to be a tough one, man. Like It is really athletic, really acrobatic. What are you thinking? I think it's hanging in the Louvre at a minimum, but I am here for Puskas. I am in agreement with you, but I don't think based off of what I know is coming, I don't think we can put it in. I think there are better goals than this one was. This was very, very impressive. No doubt about it. However, I don't think we can go ahead and say, this is like, this was one of the best goals of all time ever in forever. But I think it was really, really good. Um, one of the, I mean, the best of them, of the best so far. I'm cool to hang it in the Louvre and move on from there, no doubt. But I don't think, I don't think it's S tier worthy just yet, or Puskas award winner worthy just yet. I'm, I'm fine with putting it and hanging in the Louvre. But I think if I had to lean one towards the other, I'm leaning a little bit more towards Puskas. But no, I like I to hold off the defender and scissor kick it in is 
so good. So here, this is going to be really like it almost feels watching the thing. He made the keeper too. I'm pretty sure. No, he didn't. He put it to his right. Absolutely, 100. percent The defender should have done a heck of a lot better with that. Um, got absolutely cooked, and I'm surprised that he wasn't able to hold that off. Now McBride, that was very, very good. Uh, but I, I think that there are better technical goals in there. So I'm, I'm gonna say into the Louvre. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll keep it on hanging in the Louvre. Okay, cool. We are back to our first two-time winner. It's Marco Echeverry picking the ball up at the halfway line. Seeing the goalkeeper well, well outside of his box and just saying, I'm good. I'm pinging it straight into the goal on a fly. It's decent. It's all right. I it, feel like I feel like the keeper needed to do better there. Like, I don't know where the keeper was. He was in Guam. Yeah. I don't know like where you like it's you've seen like we've seen a couple of like halfway line goals. And I feel like the hit usually has to be like almost perfect like really good like coming into the goal high but at a good angle but Echeverry's it literally just felt like he had to just put it on goal because the keeper was just in no man's land <laughs> yeah well and, and for me here's the thing right like 2017 David Villa from half put the ball past Andre Blake and Andre Blake was standing on his line from half and it yeah, didn't win exactly. it didn't win like this was you're right this is just kind of like an open goal nothing not taking anything away from it i thought it was impressive no i mean it's yeah it's hard to put it on goal even and he put it you know it, it didn't roll in he hit it on a rope i mean it got there you know i want to say decent but honestly it feels kind of average yeah i i think we got to be harsh and and say average yeah i i don't disagree with you there i think it's it, it's it's a good goal but in the it, you know if you're comparing this to like every Marco Echeverry goal of all time, then it's probably up there. But comparing it to every goal of the year, it drops it down a level. You know what I mean? Yeah, I hear you. Now this we go. One. <laughs> now we go to a very easy one. Yeah, it's Balboa's bike. Another one that we covered in MLS history. Getting up there after the the service from the right hand side, lacing it. Center back and at the penalty spot, lacing a bicycle kick. I'm speechless. Say words. <laughs> um, it's us. I mean, uh, it, it's Puskas. It's one hundred percent. There's no debate on this. <laughs> this is is unbelievable. Again, this isn't like one of those things where like, oh, somebody headed it up and you know, like kind of like Twelman's goal. Twelman's was cool, but he he had it directly above him and time to measure it up and line it down he kicked this right off out. across he like, picked this thing out as, of a of a bending service and hit it three times as fast from 15 yards out just the the quality is unbelievable and, oh yeah that's got to be one of the best bikes in in, in the sports history honestly yeah. <laughs> if you were to put together a compilation of all the best bicycle kicks in history this is 100 percent in there i mean it has to be. And again, this isn't a, a you know, world-class European striker coming up and hitting this ball. This is a back, an American center back. Just like, yep, I got it. Don't you worry. Oh, yeah. what a goal. What an absolute goal. And now the best goal of the list. Is there anything higher than we can than, that we can go on S tier? It's Clint Mathis for the New York, New Jersey Metro Stars. Picking up the ball at, at the, past the halfway line, skinning not one, not two, but three different attackers before lacing it into the goal past a goalkeeper who was so terrified he jumped out of the way. <laughs> um, what, what's make the S? case? Make your case. Like Z tier, like highest of the like Z tier, the, the lowest. Do you know how the alphabet works? Uh, excuse me, Zlatan says Z tier is uh, clear of any other tier. Well, this Connor could Connor could score that, couldn't he? The keeper dove out of the way. The, the, he he only really beat two players, and yes, yeah. he took it. He took it from half, but it wasn't like you know, no spoiler alert. But it wasn't like Lucia Costas where he took it from half and skinned like four defenders before tucking it into the goal. Like he really he beat two guys, dribbled with no pressure on him. Like if you watch the goal back, he really yeah he he it, he. There was only two defenders beat. Nobody else was anywhere near him. I think I think I think Connor scores that. Considering I think the list is going to get a lot tougher like moving forward I, i'm fine to put this in and connor could score that i think connor can score that for sure next up it's la galaxy's carlos ruiz picking off a wonderful first time volley on the right side of the goal into the far post really nice clean contact 
personally, it's decent. I don't think it is like Brian McBride bicycle kick level or Balboa bike level, but I think it's better than uh, Echeverry's midway line. Like, I think I think it's a good middle ground. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think it's at least a B or sorry, a, a decent hit. I think I think it'd be high and decent hit. Like, I think it's it's got to be harder than it looks to be able to, like, pick up the cross and volley it that well, almost like nearly off the post and in. So, oh, yeah, I, 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 just, I just think personally, like you're going to have a whole bunch of other ones that are a little bit more impressive than that. You know, and I'm I'm looking at my obviously I have the list in front of me here. I'm looking at them and I can just looking at a few different people. Yeah, I'm looking at I'm looking at like five or six that are probably already above that. So I think I think it's a really good litmus test for what decent hit should be. It's better than just like, oh, I dribbled through a couple people and scored or I hit something into an empty net. But it's not as good as like a really acrobatic finish or something like well out of this world technically. Okay, I'm good with that. I'm good with decent hit. Moving on then to Damani Ralph. A very, very, as we're talking about technical finishes, very technical finish as the ball comes in from the right-hand side. His first touch takes it up into the air. He spins 180 degrees and rifles it past the goalkeeper for the goal against DC United. Thoughts? I'm leaning towards this being a decent hit, but I do think that it would be, like if, I know we're not going to do it, but if we were to rank them like within their tier, I think it's lower than Ruiz's because I think he's done really well to control the ball, but the volley is just because he just pops it up to himself. The volley is just a lot. I don't want to say a lot easier because it was a little bit different circumstances. He had to fully like spin and hit the volley, which he did really well. He struck it really, really well. Really good camera angle of the ball going like Mm -hmm. practically off the crossbar and in. Uh, but I do think I would put it in a decent hit. I think the volley is the volley is a little bit easier to hit when it's controlled first versus like straight off the cross. So I, I kind of see it in a similar level to Ruiz's. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I don't think it's it's as technical because Ruiz hit it first time and he had a first touch kind of prep it. But I would say that this is again on the litmus test. I think it's better than Echeverry's open goal half field finish or. When all does cut back into a bottom corner, so oh, 100%. I'm hundred cool. percent. I'm cool 100%. with it there. Yeah. Oh, 2004, another really, really nice one. Dwayne De Rosario coming back and hitting a first time rocket of a volley off the crossbar into the top corner in 2004 for the San Jose Earthquakes. I know we talked about Carlos Ruiz being like a litmus test for decent hit. I think this is hanging in the Louvre, and here's why. If you watch this back as the ball gets served in, De Rosario has to stop, backpedal, and find the ball on a different line. He hits it with a heck of a lot more power and a little bit more just like bang. You know what I mean? Now, it went in the same area as Damani Ralph, so I would say it's a lower hang it in the Louvre. Just, like, again, if we were ranking it, it would be just above the top of decent hit. Like, it would be the first guy out of hanging in the Louvre. I completely agree. I think it's I think it's hanging in the Louvre. It's similar to Ruiz's, but I think it, for me it was a little bit better considering he was kind of like moving o- away from the goal while hitting it. Mm-hmm. Uh plus he hit it like off the crossbar. I think Ruiz's was close to the the post, but I don't know if it went off the post. And I think just the added difficulty of kind of moving a little bit away from the goal and hitting the volley and still being able to hit such a good volley makes it just a little bit better than Ruiz's. So I agree with you. I think it's hanging in the Louvre, but I think it's kind of lower on hanging in the Louvre. Mm-hmm. On to 2005, and it is, oh, that guy again, Dwayne De Rosario, and another one that I think is, I think is relatively easy because of one of the camera angles. And I want to hear, you gave oh, me a okay. face. I want to hear, I want to hear your. So it's just because I met, I, when you said you thought it was easy. I thought you were saying like it was easy to hit, like score that, and you're gonna no, like, put no, it no, easy to place it. But I mean, I mean, it's easy for you... me, easy for me to score it. But like for all right, general, like down, like man. I wouldn't put in Connor could score that because I don't know if you've got those sort of techers. But like, oh, that's what it is. <laughs> Above Kuskas winners is Andrew can score that, and oh my God. that's the higher tier, right? Yeah, because your ego is the only thing above S tier. <laughs> that's right. Um, you took the words right out of my mouth because I was gonna say. 
like like it looks like a great goal and then it hits that third camera angle directly behind Dwayne and you could see the ball just curl in and it is so good um I think it's hanging in the Louvre I don't think it's quite on Puskas but it is a hell of a hit oh I'm gonna I'm gonna fight you on this one I want to put it in Puskas not only I mean the goal itself hanging in the Louvre but this is one of those goals that has been passed down like Balboa's like in history for I mean years we still see this being replayed in in MLS ads right and here, here's kind of the thing. You think of something like Roberto Carlos, right? Roberto Carlos's goal from a similar distance. Now, again, with his left foot hitting you, you know, a little bit of a of an outside of the boot, Travella into the same corner, whatever. This ball moves. I mean, it is disgusting what he just made that football do. And if you look, and I'm not saying they're on the same level in terms of like technique or meaning or whatever. But if Roberto Carlos's goal goes around as being one of the best goals in history and is played all over the place, like, look at this free kick. Oh my, I still see things of that. I would put this on an MLS level on the same, same tier as like a ridiculous free kick from a stupid amount of distance with a ridiculous amount of spin and curl into a, a top corner against a big team. I mean, it's Cali Classico too, right? We're talking about levels of, of games and what they mean. Doing that in the Cali Classico is something special. The Hartman in gold too. Yeah, that's Kev. All right, you know, you convince me. I'm, the, I'm down for Puskas. And, and and I, you know, and again, Puskas. I think I don't think there's a, a tier ranking to that. I think you are just either elite or you're not. So I don't know if I put it. I'd, I'd probably even put it above Balboa's bike personally, but that's just me. That one's tougher to make. Yeah, or but, but again, we don't we don't, we don't need to do that, work. so it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> We move on then to 2006. It's Brian Ching, another goal we've covered in MLS history. Service comes in from the left-hand side. Header goes straight up in the air. He changes direction, takes two steps, and hits a ridiculous bicycle kick. Just no hesitation into the bottom corner. I believe that was for a hat trick as well. Is that right? Is that that a hat trick game? Every time we covered Brian Ching scoring, it was at least a a brace. Yeah. Dude only scores in bunches. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, This one... I'll take. I mean, it was your story. I'll give you the. Uh, I'll give you the honors. I'm conflicted on this one. I I think the highest I can put it is hanging in the Louvre mm-hmm. because if I'm going to compare it to Balboa's bike, like Balboa's bike was so cleanly hit that it just it crossed the goal line without having like the fact that Ching's bounces before it goes in. I feel like kind of takes away from it a little bit. Like he just didn't get as much power on it. And I know that's not really his fault because someone kind of like, I don't remember exactly who it was, but they headed the ball towards him. So it kind of probably took a little bit off the ball and made it harder to get more behind it. But I feel like it just takes away from the goal a little bit. So I'm thinking it's either decent hit or hanging in the Louvre. So I, I'll kind of, I'll hear what your thoughts are on that one. Maybe you can help decide. Oh, both I'm, the time. I'm 100% hanging in the Louvre. I think. The and and I understand your points, and I don't think any of your points are are necessarily wrong. But again, we talk about De Rosario having to readjust his body to hit a volley into a top corner, and I know it didn't have the power. This guy was three steps into the box, had to put on the brakes. <laughs> Do you mean three body. steps in the end zone? <laughs> <laughs> Two steps Field in the end. Yeah. He, he was about he was about <laughs> to score a touchdown. He stopped, turned around, <laughs> went backwards four yards, and then hits this bicycle kick. No hesitation either. Again, it's not like he prepped it and then put it up and then hit it. He took this thing out of the air from it, it almost goes off the screen. I mean, that's got to be out of the air 20, 20, 40 feet. And then putting it in the bottom corner. I know it doesn't fly in like Balboa's. I mean, I think still had pace on it and enough where he hit it from a similar location. I mean, you're you're 15 yards out, and that goalkeeper was beat easily. I think I think it's in the Louvre, and honestly, again, if we were doing rankings, I'd put it high in the Louvre. Like, not necessarily the you walk through the front door of the Louvre and it's the first thing you see, but like second or third turn type of thing. All right, I'm good with that. We then move on to another Chicago Fire 2007, Huatemec Blanco who picks up the ball just about 30-ish yard, eh, about 25 based off of our friends in the football football world. <laughs> it's kind of helpful. Thank God, thank God for old school MLS <laughs> helping us uh, generate that. Um, yeah, he picks the ball up about 25 yards and hits it with the left boot right into the top corner. This was a uh, prime designated player era, first year of designated players. 
think maybe he gets a boost for for being a big name guy. Uh, it's average. It's a decent hit. I'm not super like sold on it. I, I would put it in average, low average personally. I think the technique is really nice to be able to take it down and just fire it home from distance. It wasn't like the goalkeeper was out of position or anything. He hit it with good pace, but I'm going to go ahead and say it's average. So what I will clarify before I give my response to is when we say average, by no means are we saying this is an average general goal. Correct. Like this is just average within the sphere of goal of the year winners. Well, um, let me, let me also just say that like, it kind of is average based on the amount of bangers that are scored in MLS today. Like it kind of like that's a goal you see every week this uh, this year. Uh, I still think that's compared to like the like any normal amount of goals. Like I I still think that's above average. But in the in the context of our tier list for this, I, I agree. I think it's average. Yeah, I think it's better than the edge of every like turning, beating one player and passing it into the box. Right. Uh, yeah. The, the technique was there, but. Again, it, now if we're talking about what we would drop, I would drop this one before I drop Eric Winalda because this this one wasn't anything. Special. I would I would flip. I would drop Winalda's before I drop this. Well, luckily we don't have to, so that's good. Then we go into 2008 with RSL's Will Johnson. Ball comes in. He's at the top of the box. His first touch goes straight in the air. He turns and rifles a volley into the top corner. Past that is a uh, Dallas Burn kit that he is playing against. Goodness me, what a finish that is. I think it's a decent hit. I don't know if I'd, I'd necessarily put it in the Louvre, but I think it's a really decent hit. He was able to take it very similar to Monty Ralph, right? The ball comes up, bounces up, he turns, and he's able to volley it. I think it's a really good technical finish. I do think that there are some some better ones out there. Then, yeah, I'd, I'd say I'd say there are some better ones out there. I'd like to hear your thoughts, though. What did we put the Monty's? Did we put that in decent hit? Decent hit. hit. Decent hit. I'd put this in decent hit also. It's high. I think it's high up there. I think it's better than Damani's, but I do think it is in decent hit. Yeah, de- it's definitely high up there. Like, it's a great finish, especially from rookie Will Johnson. I think it's rookie year Will Johnson. Like, the first touch and then just the, yep, screw you, I'm putting this in the top corner. That's that's Tecker's right there. Um, yeah, I'm good with decent hit. Yeah, I think it's a decent hit in the in the grand scope of what we're talking about here. Yeah. But yeah, what a finish. 2009, Landon Donovan. Oh, I love this goal. I really love this goal. But yeah, ball gets chipped into the box. It's half cleared by the defender on New England. It falls to Landon Donovan 20 yards out, who hits it with his weaker left foot and absolutely curls this ball into the far right-hand corner of the goal. And again, this one has another brilliant camera angle to watch that ball curl into the far corner. What do you got? I keep trying to figure out if the defender got ahead to that at all. Like deflected it. it. Yeah. Like did he impact the like trajectory of the ball at all? But it's so hard to tell because this is like in like 360 or this is in 720. But still, it's a little bit tough to pick out if uh, like because because I feel like if he gets if he alters the movement of the ball by heading it, then I feel like it takes away from it a little bit. Not to say that's not a good hit, like obviously weak foot outside the box like it doesn't have it doesn't have as much movement as Dwayne's. i'm watching it back in slow motion and i think you've got a little bit of a point it does look it's like so it deflected off i mean if, it, he, if it? it does it's it might only be a little bit but yeah but, I but mean, that, could, full- that could that could create the movement that we're all like oh my god i can't believe that happened well, I'm wondering as a goal, like you can speak on this as a goalkeeper, if there is that marginal amount of contact there, like does that affect you as the goalkeeper in terms of from, reading that ball? From that far out, it does. It's you, The usual general rule is the closer you are, the bigger of a deflection you need to get it by you because you have less time for it to move, right? Um, so, and especially when you're hitting it and it then adds spin onto the ball. Like if it was a, if it was hit and you didn't spin the ball to create that force to now curve it it's a lot easier because you're just you've just changed the direction it's a it's like a like an angle right you go in and then straight out you know okay i just plant my feet and i go where in the curve at the moment it's going one way and you think it's going to continue until it starts to spin again so it's a bit a bit tougher to deal with for sure Uh, i'm kind of torn on this one yeah and and you brought up this deflection thing deflection gate if you will 
and <laughs> and, and like now Sergei. now you've got me thinking because it does it looks like he gets just enough on it to to help it along you know um because when you watch it in live time you're like oh dude that's unreal like that's just who who could do something like that only landon donovan right yeah but man every I time i watch it back <laughs> it looks more and more like he hits it I'm going to, you know what I'm going to say? You can only tell from that camera angle that you were talking about. Yeah. You know what I'm going to say? I'm going to say he doesn't actually make contact here because I think he tries to and he misses it. <clears throat> That's what I'm going to look at here. So I'm watching it back slow motion. No, he misses it. He misses it. I'm going to, I'm going to try and pause it on I, the exact frame. I, I'm, I'm watching it back and I'm watching it from that angle. And I paused. <gasps> wait, it wait. All- it looks. It looks so close. <laughs> There's only one person who will be able to give us a straight answer. Yeah, Landon, get on the pod, bro. No, not Landon. Whoever was defending. I don't know who that is, but whoever that is trying to jump for it. They're the only one. And Landon probably can't tell either. The guy who went for the header might be able to tell. My consensus on this is if you think it or, or, I, so if he hit it with his head, if the defender hit it with his head, I think it's decent hit. If he doesn't, I think it's hanging in the loop. I the more I watch it back, I'm thinking it was deflected. It feels like it was the the angle of the ball going up, and again, it may be the camera angle, so don't jump at us. But as the ball is traveling, it goes like this, and then it goes up before it curves. To me, that's a deflection. I'm gonna put it at the top of decent hit. Okay, I think I think that's where it belongs, and. It hurts me because that was honestly like top of hanging in the loop for me when I was like imagining where this was going to go. <laughs> and then you come in, you're like, hey, you remember all your, you know, remember all the things that you idolized your kid? <laughs> but look at this pin here. Let me just pop your bubble really quick. This I'm is why so no, this is why you're the least favorite bubble. person on the pod. <laughs> I'm the only person on the pod. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. We then go to 2010. It's Chicago Fire again. It's Marco Papa. Ball gets laid off. He rifles it from 25 yards out into the top left-hand corner of the goal against the San Jose Earthquakes. I think on your day, Connor, I think you you get lucky and it, it skims off your toe and flies in there. I'm not sold on this at all. I think it's yeah, okay this, at best. It's not great. It's not it, great. It's a good it, hit. It's it's that again. I, if we're out at Burr Intermediate School and you're just messing around and you accidentally kick a ball, it very well likely could fly into. Might the top get one of those for the day. Yeah. yeah. It might, no, it might like roll off of your shin and then flick up off your foot and you right in because you you know you miss hit it, but it might still end up there. I, I would put this in Connor could score that. I'm just I, I it's a good goal, but we're talking for, about for goals goal of the year. Of the year yeah, for goal of the year. I, I would I would be inclined to agree with you. Yeah, that's uh, that's disappointing. I feel like we're scoring that much more often nowadays. Yeah, one that like I said, that's an average goal this like in this season. That, that doesn't even make like a goal of the year like nomination. That's a below average league cup goal. <laughs> Jake, Jake Davis has three of those. <laughs> Jake Davis as a right back has three of those this year. Exactly. Oh man! All right, this one. Um, in honor of my scarf, this is where the scarf came from. 2011. It's Darlington Nagby. Just watch and enjoy it. I, I mean, there's nothing else to say. Boom. Boom. Ping. Right in the top corner. I mean, we did a we did a video on best goal in MLS history. We did a little TikTok. This one was one of those goals. It's an easy Puskas winner for me. I mean, the control off of the the punched out clear uh, goalkeeper clearance to juggle it a couple times, then have the audacity in your rookie year to hit a a side volley from twenty two yards out that flies into the top corner. There's no debate on this one. If you disagree, you are fired. Don't you dare. I, Don't you dare. There's a part of me that does. There's a part of me that thinks it's hanging in the Louvre. What? Nah. They gave him all day to the fact where he could juggle it twice before he hit the volley. They gave him all day. Like, like, obviously, the technique is insanely good, which is why it's, at the very least, like one of the top in hanging in the Louvre. But SK, the SK, SKC defense was just like, Standing there, it gave him all day to just he, juggle it and then he hit, hit a the volley. juggling volley from 23 yards into the upper bins of that goal past Jimmy Nielsen, who we talk about as one of the best goalkeepers in SKC history. I don't care how much time he has because he also put it through a wall of people who are standing in front of that goal. It's not like he had to, it's not like he hit it from half and there was nobody in front of him like Marco Echeverry. He, he took it and he volleyed it. And yes, he had the time to volley the ball, sure. 
But look at the amount of people that are standing between him and that top corner. And he's getting closed down, too, as it happens, by the way. Like, there's a there's a defender going out, and there's one, two, three, four, five different SKC yeah. players on that line getting ready to try and block that ball. Now, here here's the argument you should be making. In the world of VAR, this gets called back. Because Pamudaka is standing in the in the line of the goalkeeper in an offside position. <laughs> so in the world of VAR, that goal gets called back, I think. Let me see if I can pause it on the actual contact. Oh, it, it'd be very close, wouldn't it? It'd be very, very close. All right, fine. I'm I'm fine There's, to put in Puskas. I, I, I will be. say that I think I think I mean I can't remember exactly what we have in Puskas right now, but I think what we have in Puskas might be better than this, but I'm I find to put it in Puskas. I, I listen. I don't often wish for our listeners and fans to slander you in the comments because then I have to deal with it. But please, <laughs> please get after Connor for this. For this, I'm agreeing with you. I'm putting it in the top tier of. I gold shouldn't of the year. have to convince you to do that. That's the problem I have. I shouldn't have to convince you. But this is where the this is where when you combine somebody with ball knowledge with Connor, who has none. You have to do a lot more than you expect. You got your wish. Stop complaining. <laughs> All right, here. I'll let you pick this one and see if you can convince me. It's Patrick Iani, 2012. Another center back getting up for a free kick in Seattle. The ball gets served in. And with no hesitation, peels off of his man and hits a flying scissor kick past one <laughs> again. Jimmy Nielsen, poor guy, just out here out here in every highlight reel for the wrong That's reason. That's the only way you could score against him is with a yeah, banger. Yeah, bangers, right? Uh Flying scissor kick into the goal. Uh, really, really brilliant technique. Give me your thoughts. It's got to be hanging in the loof because we put McBride's there, and I think this is similar. So I think it's got to match it. I, I understand he's a center back. I don't think that's something. I don't think it's enough that I can bump it up to Puskas just because he's a center back. If you were to tell me you wanted in Puskas, I'd listen. But I'm totally okay with having it hanging in the loof for the exact reason you just said. It is... Similar to uh, De Rose volley, it's similar to Ching's bicycle kick where he had to change his direction. Same thing with McBride. Change your direction, get athletic, get acrobatic, and put it away. No disagreements there. I definitely think uh, definitely think it's a, it's a good shout in hanging in the Louvre. I'd put it I'd put it middle to top though. I'd put it up there. I think the technique for again for a center back is very very impressive. <laughs> I was going to say, I feel like the hanging in the Louvre is just going to get crowded. <laughs> so, so, and here's the deal. It should, right? If you're talking about goals of the year, it should. There shouldn't yeah, be more. Fair. There shouldn't that's be more fair. on the bottom or in the middle than there should be in the top because that's they're the best of the best, right? Yeah. Now, I, I honestly, I'm a little bit disappointed on the amount of goals that you could score that were goals of the year, but that's just me. <laughs> it's early um, years, early days. Yeah. 2013, this guy Camillo shows up to Vancouver, balls out for two years and gets out of here, but not without a goal of the year. It's Darren Maddox on the uh, left-hand side, floats the ball into the box. It's received, played back across the box, and from 17 yards out, a flying scissor kick into the bottom of the goal past Donovan Ricketts in Portland, the Cascadia Cup. I love it. I, I think it is it is really, really athletic and impressive. Do you hang it in the Louvre? I mean, that's kind of the the separation that we have here is impressive volleys are decent hits hanging in the loose are, are bicycle kicks from distance <laughs> Puskas winner is our next level average is like from distance and then just regular dribble goals or counter you could score that I feel like it'd be wrong not to hang it in the loose for the 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 distance the Cascadia cup you know packed house the first time finish now I'd hear arguments against it because he really didn't have to change his direction but he did it over a closing out will johnson lots of power to get past donovan ricketts i, I would i go ahead and, and hang it in the louvre maybe lower but that's where i'd put it it's it's definitely hanging in the louvre and and the reason for me is because of the sheer commitment to the stripe that he put in this i i'm watching it back and i'm pausing it and he puts everything into that scissor kick he gets up there he puts his body on the line to hit that scissor kick i can pause it this man is horizontal about like i don't know who's that standing right behind him one of his teammates he's like at the this guy's waist he's completely horizontal he absolutely put his body on the line to hit that scissor kick and then to tack on all the stuff that you were talking about before like the distance the technique and all that 
I think it's definitely hanging in the Louvre. All right. I'm cool with it. We then move on to 2014. It's our friend Obafemi Martins in Seattle against friend of the pod, John Bush. Sorry, sorry, Bush. <laughs> we got to we gotta throw this one in there. Gets in behind. You know what? I want to say like he was trying to cross it, put it across goal, and it ended up going in the net. It almost felt like he didn't mean to do it, but he, he was able to dink it over Bushy and put it in the back corner. You know, I, I think we might get heat from Seattle for this. I think it goes an average, like, because I don't think he meant to do it. I think he meant to cross the ball and he mishit it. So for, I'm looking at the side camera angle. Ah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little, I'm a little convinced that it was purposeful. And it's like, it's crazy technique to score that, but I am kind of inclined to say average as well. What I want to see, and I'm going to look back, was that was there somebody like relatively in the area where you could make the argument that he was maybe trying to cross it? So it looks like Lamar Nagel is getting there late, number 27. Yeah. Where he was, I, I, that's, that's what I'm saying. I think he was like, okay, I know somebody ought to be there. And if not, like, I can turn around and be like, yo, I did all this work. Why weren't you in the box? But he, Looks yeah, like- you know what? I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to say he he was going for the cross because when I'm watching it back, he doesn't even I don't think he looks at the goal once. No, he, he, plays that. I, he picks up his head to look across. But again, I think he's yeah, I, I think he's trying to serve that ball. You're right. He does, He's just trying to get it across goal and say what could happen. And and again, this is one of those things where it's like I remember growing up and be like Obafemi Martin's goal. Oh, my God. What a killer. And now I watch it back and I'm like mid <laughs> <laughs> you're you're all right i guess just remember seattle fans we just put your recent goal and hanging in the loop so don't yeah, come for our be throats. nice <laughs> be nice all right we go to 2015 it's christian nemeth going up against portland taking it from the halfway line cutting once twice <laughs> three times beating a fourth defender and putting it bottom corner against adam corsi here's what i'm gonna say and, and this is gonna be a little bit against what we're doing this is going in decent hit for me, and here's why. If you watch it back on the zoomed-in version, you're going to see him cross up, break ankles, and put on the ground the greatest number six of all time in MLS, and then do it again to his center back partner, who was absolutely lights out for Portland, and then get by Liam Ridgewell, who was another solid player, and tuck it in the bottom corner. It is You don't do that to Diego Chara. Like, and I'm sure he got a stud in the boot for it afterwards when Diego Chara woke up and was like, okay, great. Now you're going to pay for that. I, 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 for the amount of people that he beat, it's better than Clint Mathis. For the types of players that he beat, it's better than average. I'm putting in decent hit. Now I'm not putting it like close to the top if we were going to do it that way, but it's decent hit for me. Uh, it for me, it's average because it's similar to the Mathis goal, but I do think it's a little bit better because he was able to cross up Diego Char like that. Diego Char on the ground, maybe twice. Diego Char twice. That's not an average goal. But he you know? beat so he beat Char twice and then he beat the center back. So he beat three people. He beat three which people. Which is one four better times. than Mathis. Yeah. And then he just scored like a barely normal goal from there. Like normal in this context. I think it's rough. I think I think it's average. I think, I think it's better than Mathis, but I don't think it's decent hit. I think that you are really bad at this. And this is why I'm going to put it in the same tier. However, as Landon however, however, escucha me. You gave me Winalda an average instead of Connor could score that. So I will compromise with you and put this in average as well. But it is going in the top of average. I don't care where you put an average. We're not ranking them within their tier. So if that makes your heart feel better, then by all means. All righty. On to 2016. It's Colorado Rapids' first time, second time on the list with Marcel Balboa. And it's Shelkin Gashi, the free kick against Vancouver. It's from a way, way out. He hits it, curls it right into the top corner. You get a <laughs> shot of number 67, some dude named Dave Eyes for Vancouver. Uh, I bet he didn't go on to do anything special, I'm sure. He just kind of, look at him, just standing there, not trying to defend the free kick. Probably got cut after that, didn't he? But he puts it into the top corner. It's from it's from distance. It's a it's it's okay. I'll put it in average for the for the distance that he hit it from. 
I think like if it was right on the edge of the box, I think it's probably you could score that, but I'll I'll put it in average for the distance and, and the, the accuracy of the finish. My question is like, I think the Dayro free kick is better, but do I think the Dayro free kick is like three tiers better? Because they're both from a very far distance. Dayro's was from well farther out. Not well farther out. Well farther out. No. 100%. Completely disagree. This is I'd have to rewatch it, though. I will rewatch it. Go ahead. We can wait. It is 100% not from well farther out. It's. I think it is a little bit farther out, but not well. The Gashi angle is terrible. In yeah, terms this of is. Uh, it's really good for. It's it's terrible for us, but it's really good for. Shows some good curl on the ball, though. Dwayne Davis, sorry, two thousand five free kick. Okay, I, I I will take back my statement. I I agree with you. I'm watching it back now. Definitely not. Eh, yeah, definitely not from way farther out. It's probably a little bit based off of the location of the ball. I will take that back. You, I, I'll give you that. I don't think I don't think it has as much curl as Dayro. No, I don't. I, I don't. I think Dayro. I think Dayro's is is. And you got to remember, we put Dayro's up there because of its significance to. Well, you you put it up there because MLS. It, no, no, yeah. we did right. So we are agreeing on one tier list. So we. I put it I in. was just not in the mood to complain with you. I I'm pretty sure I stated that I thought it was hanging in the Louvre, but uh, I trust me, really the video is not going to see that. <laughs> well, I'll say it right now. I think I thought I think Day Rose is more so hanging in the Louvre, but I think you're you're letting. Stop muting me. <laughs> Stop trying to silence me. The, the video is definitely not going to right. that. <laughs> I think Deiros is hanging in the Louvre. I think Gashi's is worse, but I don't think it's that much worse. So I would say Gashi's is a decent hit. So let me ask you this. If you think Deiros is hanging in the Louvre because you want it lower, which <clears> you're insane, but okay. And you're like, I don't know if Gashi's is three tiers lower. Is it two tiers lower? If we're putting Deiros in Puskas, which I'm fine with, I think Gashi's is decent hit. You're going to tell me that's not a decent hit. Look how far out the free kick is. There is it's, curl So, on again, it. it's, a de- it's a decent hit in an MLS season. Goal of the year, that's just a free kick, dude. You put There's no way you could tell me that you think a free kick from all the way out here, curling it into the top corner, is on the same playing field as the Wijnaldum goal. I just, I, there's no way I can wrap my head around putting this free kick three tiers below the Dayro one. Three tiers is insane. It's the bottom of decent hit. I'll give it to I you. I don't care. That's bottom. fine. Put it in a decent hit. All right. Well, this one we're not even going to need to be able to argue about because this is 2017. It's Atlanta United. It's Hector Vialba. This is average. This is this is probably below Connor could score that, honestly. Like, what an absolute sham that this one... So we had one similar, somewhat similar. I forget who scored it. And we put it in. Connor could score that. If you could remind me whose it was. So it was just, it was just like a, a shot Marco, Marco Papa. Mar- yeah, uh, not, Marco yeah, Papa. Marco Papa. How do we think this relates to Marco Papa's goal? Because it, it's somewhat similar in that regard. It's, it's not a scissor it's kick. It's not a, I think it's, it's from better. like a little bit further out. You, you gotta yeah. consider, if you're going to consider like all the like, oh, sentimental feelings, whatever. Like this is a rivalry game against... Orlando, where he hit that. So I, I think it's average. I don't think it's I don't think it's anything amazing, but I do think it's better than Connor could score that. Like he rifles that. So so here's here's the problem I have with it, and I'm trying to figure out uh where I can find it. My problem is this I know this beat out goals that were well clear of it. And that's that's the problem. Why does I that matter? Because you because it doesn't belong here. Like it just doesn't. But it's here, and it's part of the tier list. I uh, think it's average. I don't. I don't. Just because, just because it beat out better goals doesn't mean all I'm of a sudden so, I can let, suddenly. Let, score sorry, that. sorry, sorry. Let me. I, I'm okay. I was going to put it in average anyway. Okay. But it hurts me that we all know it doesn't belong there. Like it should not have. I'm won happy that it belongs there. I, I know probably you voted because for it. because you like rigging the system. Yeah. Yeah, here's the David Villa one that Andre Blake's literally on his line. And he scores on him from half. Like, you should be thrilled that Tito Villalba beat that out. You want NYCFC to have more goals, goal of the years than, or the same amount of goal of the years as you? Here, here's what I'm saying. I don't, I don't believe it was even the best goal in 2017. It probably wasn't, but the level of goals is much higher than it was in like 1997. 
I think average. You, I mean, we I both think agreed it's average. I don't know why we're waffling. No, on I think so you need. I think we need to adjust ourselves and say that Connor could score that. And again, we play it in the meaning of the goal. And this goal is tainted by the fraudulent Atlanta United fans who are rigging the system so that their team can get. I'm telling you now, I couldn't even accidentally score that. Let's just move on to the next one because it's so easy. I'll put it in average. I don't like it though. Yes, you do. No, I definitely do not. This next one is super easy. Let's just knock this one out. 2018. Some Swedish dude shows up. This is up what the Z tier is for. This is what the Z tier is for. <laughs> some, yeah. Some random dude shows up to MLS against in the first ever LA versus LA Derby. This actually is going into Connor can score that because the goal should have never happened. So if you watch the video back, there's an Ola Kamara foul in the buildup that was not given, probably because Don Garber was in the referee's ear saying, don't you absolutely dare or you are fired and not only fired from this job, but fired into the sun. And good on Don for doing that because <laughs> otherwise we wouldn't have got this. <laughs> then Zlatan steps up and says, yep, Tyler Miller, you want to be how far off your line? Think again, buddy. And he hits this side volley. And I love the I love the view from behind where you can see it swerve. Now again, an absolute clear foul on Ola Kamara in the build I mean, I can't believe that wasn't given. But anyways, we move. <laughs> we move. Cry harder. It gets finished into the top corner. And this is the view I'm talking about here. Clear and utter foul. And he says, I don't care. I'm going to hit this with as much swaz as possible. Yeah, if there was a, a six tier, it's a Z tier. If not, it's Puskas. If not for the goal itself, for the publicity, it got the lead. This is the best goal we've seen on the list so far. Like, bar none. Not only the goal itself, but also like the significance of it. Just in this game, coming off the bench to come back from 3-0 down to get a point in this game with this goal. Like, they, I, I think they, no, LA won that game 4-3. Did they? I yeah, thought he, he scored He scored the winner too. I think you might be right, yeah. I, I know I'm right. I, I think I don't, I don't do anything like, outside of MLS. Like, I, I know I'm right. <laughs> and I, I, I would like to argue your comment of significance. I mean, Clint Mathis did score a goal for the mighty New York, New Jersey Metro. So I hate the fact that I can't mute you. <laughs> Fight me. And now we get another one that is going to be full of uh, slander. <laughs> Joseph Martinez. Look, look, I receives, get it. You have your agenda. Joseph Martinez receives the ball in from the right hand side. Back heel flicks it to himself, cuts it in the box, fakes another shot, bends it into the bottom, the, the right hand side. Again, if there was a if there was a lower tier, then Connor could score that. <laughs> this is where it would go. No, this one's this one's pretty cool. Where would you put it as a as a non biased fan? Because I put I put the Metro average. Connor could score that. I think it's average. I, I think I think the the touch the back heel like touch I think is really nice. And then to get like he clearly fakes out two defenders because two defenders go and play it as if he's going to shoot the ball. Like he gets the first one, then he gets the second one, completely diving in front of him, gets around him, is going away from the goal, and hits it left footed into the corner to score. I. I can't honestly. I can't remember if that's against Orlando too. That might have also been. Oh uh, no! Wait, is that or is that FCC? I think that might be FCC, which kind of which kind of taints the goal a little bit because this was wooden spoon FCC error. But yeah. I still think it's average. See, I'm I'm going to disagree with you. I would put this in decent hit. I think the first touch is brilliant. And again, yes, it is wooden spoon FCC with that's probably Primislav Teton and gold, you know, leader in the PSXG plus minus all time. But that first <laughs> touch is great. And then again, this is what makes Joseph Martinez as special as he was. Every other striker on the planet hits that ball first time after that touch is like, I can't believe I just did that. And it gets blocked. He has the state of mind to calm himself down, fake the shot, send the defender for a shot, uh, a, a cup of coffee. Then again, instead of hitting it, just, oh my God, look at all the things I've done. He has a composure again to take that touch around another sliding defender. And then on his weaker left foot, tuck it into the side netting. I know it's, I know it's the, the wooden spoon FCC. And I know it's, they probably won this game six, nothing and whatever, but yeah, I, I would put that in a, at a decent hit because of the intricacies of, of each movement. There is so much in that goal that went on. I think there's like average you're looking at. Yeah, honestly, I, I am on board for decent hit. 
Yeah, I, I couldn't. I I couldn't let you slander your own player like that. Like the strike itself, just comparatively on the list, just doesn't feel like super amazing. Like obviously, all the stuff before it is great, and I think is what probably bumps it up to decent hit. But I think the fact that he did it on his weak foot too is really impressive. Yep. Yeah. I'm. Um. I'm not gonna let you do that. All right. We then move into COVID time. It is the empty Crew Stadium. And it is once again our friend Darlington Nagby pulling out the spectacular. Ball comes in from our king and future World Cup striker for the USMNT, Giassi Zardis. And Nagby was just like, you know what? Let's have fun with it. It's, I mean, screw it. It's COVID time, right? Chips the ball up to himself, hits a full-time volley from 35 out into the bottom corner. Yeah, he he puts he puts this ball in the air, volleys it from thirty five yards out past Bobby Shuttleworth. This is a Puskas winner in every sense of the word, and I don't know how you could disagree. And I I can see it on your face; you want to really badly. Don't even. I almost. I honestly, at this point, I want to I want to disagree just to get you riled up and get you angry. And what's up with Darlington Nagby and just like juggling the ball to himself to hit volleys? Like <laughs> he he knows he knows when the vibes are on and he just he just runs with it, you know. I'm fine with that in Puskas. Oh my god, what a hit! He's got two Puskas winners. That's so crazy. Oh man, I mean, what a when hit. he scores, he only scores bangers. That's right. Him and uh, him and Caden Clark. Caden Clark reference. Yeah. In 2024. <laughs> in this economy, are you kidding me? We then move to 2022, I think. Is it? No, it's 2021. Excuse me. 2021. Still a little bit of the, the COVID time. It's RSL. This is one of the first games back with fans. I remember watching this. And it is Rubio Rubin from RSL. There's a throw in that comes in. It's flicked on by Demir Krylak, chested down by Rubin, bicycle kicked in past the San Jose Earthquakes goalkeeper, JT Marcinkowski, I believe that is at that time. The technique is... The confidence, I think it's got to go in the Louvre. I think that's where I'd put it. It is, you know, back to goal. There's a defender on him, right? Ball gets flicked into the air. He squares up. There's a defender on him, closing down the space. He gets a pass the defender. The only reason I don't have it any higher, and I'd put it low in the Louvre, by the way, like back of back wall that nobody gets to really walk by unless you're really dedicated, is because I think Marcinkowski should save this personally. Like if you watch the behind the or behind the shot, it's right at his fingertips. I feel like he probably should do better with that, but that's just me. I don't. I don't know if Marcin Koski could have saved that one. I'm not sure. I, I mean, I 100 percent agree. It's hanging in the Louvre. I just don't know if I would say bottom of hanging in the Louvre because I, I feel like it's better than Brian Ching's bicycle kick. Ah, considering he had to chest it, and then he 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 hit it. I think it they're I think they're like, different levels the of. I think they're different levels of difficult. Like Brian Ching had to move, like find it in the area to change his trajectory. Ruby Rubin had a guy on his back and, and had to deal with that. So I think they're different levels of the same type of difficult or different types of difficult at the same level. That's what I should say. All right. Well, it doesn't matter anyway. Hang it in the Louvre. Hang it in the Louvre. It is. We then move on to 2022. It's New England versus Atlanta. Atlanta, as expected, losing, playing on Joseph Martinez in what is unfortunately kind of the down point of his Atlanta career after his injury, but that does not mean he is not due for a banger. Brooks Lennon serves the ball in, and Yoso says, bet. And he just lines up for a bicycle kick and rifles it past the New England goalkeeper, who I believe is Matt Turner in this one. Is that Turner or is it Jordy? It might be Petrovic. Petrovic. It's Petrovic. Point it's Jordy. It's, it's a Chelsea goalkeeper. <laughs> Wow, that is that that automatically bumps it up to S tier when you can beat up on Chelsea goalkeepers like that. No, it's it's such a good take. I'll, I'll, again, from an Atlanta point of view, your thoughts? I'm trying not to put any bias in it, so I want to I want to make sure I get all the angles. And I mean, scoring against Jordy is I feel like that boosts it up. Like Jordy was unreal when he was here. In the in the hopes that I'm maybe trying to avoid bias, I'm going to say hang it in the Louvre. But if you tell me Puskas, I will not argue with you. Nope, I've got I've got it in the Louvre. I think if he was not a striker that is known for scoring goals like that, it'd be it'd be Puskas. Like the same reason that Balboa's was like it's it's Bal- it's like Balboa's, but he's a striker. And that's why I'd, I would drop it a level lower because we put 
Balboa in the Puskas because he was a center back who did it. You know what I mean? That's fine. I'm fine with that. And then we go to the final goal. It's Luciano Acosta last year. Very similar to one Cletus Mathis. Very similar to one Christian Nemeth. Ball gets played in. He skins one Atlanta, uh, one Charlotte defender skins oh, another. You wanted, to, you wanted to be I Atlanta, know. don't you? <laughs> Crosses up a third and then dinks it into the top corner of the goal. It's impressive. It is. I mean, I think what puts it ahead for me is he megs one guy, touches it around him, does another another touch around a, a sliding defender, escapes them too. Crosses up a third defender twice. It's very Christian Nemeth feeling. And we have Nemeth in average. And I disagreed with that. I thought it should be in decent hit. If I were to do anything, I'd put Nemeth back in, in decent hit and put Lucia Costa down here. You think it's worse than Nemeth? I think I think Nemeth was more impressive because of the players he was going up against. This is a Charlotte team that before Dean Smith was atrocious defensively. And they were getting countered and they their counter defense was poor. I think Nemeth I think- was more impressive. I think this is bottom of decent hit. Wow, you're out of your mind. This is recency. I think it's bias. better than Nemeth. This is recency bias, and I'm not. I'm not standing for it. If you're going to meg, if, the finish was top corner. He he megged he, an Addison Melanda who was nowhere near the level he who, is today. Nowhere okay, near the right level. Now, oh, nowhere like, near the level he is today. While Christian Nemeth, he put Diego Chara on the ground twice. I won't have it. If you're if you're going it, to compare the me. two. If you're going to compare the two, they need to be in the same level. I don't think I don't think Lucci's was better than Nemeth. Then I say average. You want to put it in average? That's fine. But you yeah. either have to put both in decent hit or both in average. So in if average. you want to put them, if you want to put them both in average, I'm okay with that. I don't think it was anything special. Now we could do something fun like predict goal of the year to this point right now. But I don't even have the. I don't How long are we moving on? <laughs> huh? You know what's you know what's wild to me that's not in this, and and it maybe maybe it was because it was in like a different competition and not in like MLS regular season that one solo goal from Vela. No, that was, know. that was, uh, that was 2018. Okay. So that was, it, that's fair. Like that's the yeah. only year that I think could have beat out that goal. Cause that Vela goal was disgusting. Was it? I think it was. Yeah. It probably goal was the, goal of the year nominee. Oh, tell wait. me like the Tito Viabo goal beat it or something. No, I no, think no, 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 they couldn't. LAC didn't exist yet, but that would be funny. Hold on, let me see. Uh, percent, let's say. Unless it wasn't. Oh, no, it was 2019. So it was. Who beat it in 2019? Oh, it was Yosef's little ship turn. Yosef Martinez. <laughs> yes, is, that's so that funny. That is so ridiculous. <laughs> but this is what I mean. This is why no Atlanta gold should be anywhere near this list. It is so stupid. Stupid that you guys have robbed our list of goals like Carlos Vela's solo skinning of San Jose for Joseph Martinez's fake shot goal against Wooden Spoon winning FCC. You hey, listen, listen. All right, it was San Jose that he Vela scored the goal on. That's not that much better than Wooden Spoon FCC. You you kill me. You make me. Your whole fan base makes me sad. I love this fan base. Uh, yeah, but this is That's this is so the funny. this is the dangers of doing a fan vote, right? <laughs> All right, y'all. That is it for us on the tier list. Please let us know what you think. It is open for debate. I mean, the ones that Connor made me move are open for debate, but where I put it, I think we were good. Um, please let us know. We, we'd love to interact with you guys there. Let us know. What do you think about all of our other stuff? By following us wherever you get your podcast, so you know the next time our episode goes live. We've got another news coming up on Wednesday that you are going to really enjoy. Or it might be on Monday. Are we going to put this out on Wednesday or Monday? I don't. I don't know. We could put this out Monday. Okay, you want to do that and then and then news on Wednesday? I'm cool with it. Yeah. Even though the new actually, let's do let's do news Monday and. Uh, this Wednesday because it'll make it easier for the clips because this is not going to okay. have any clips and I want to post something daily. So um, let's redo that. Um, yeah. So, so stick around for our MLS news segments, stick around for our MLS history segments, more of these tier lists, more of the top tens. I mean, we've got tons of more content coming, uh, including hopefully a lot more interviews. So we will keep working on those. Make sure you follow us wherever you get your social media, usually TikTok, Twitter, YouTube, 
Instagram, we are really pushing YouTube almost at 520. We hit 500 like a week ago, and now we're almost up to 520. So keep on keeping on with that, guys. We really appreciate your involvement there. And leave us a like and, and share it with whoever you listen to podcasts or watch videos with. So you, we they know about us, too. Why not? Thanks again so much for listening and or watching. And we will see you next time on the next episode of the Designated Players and MLS podcast. <laughs> Grace says goodbye too. See ya.